I'm joined with former Mayo footballer Enda Varley to talk about the huge Connick final clash this weekend with Galway. 46 titles apiece. Because this is knockout, Enda, does it, fe- does it feel like it means more again? Um, what do you know, Shane? Um, I didn't know that. It was 46 apiece. 46, 46 apiece, apiece. yeah, yeah. You probably um, have one or two yourself from the famous five in a row recently. Five in a row, yeah. I would have got four myself, I'd say. Um, so, look, yeah, knockout would always bring a certain certain amount of pressure. Obviously, there's no back door. There's, um, you know, the league the league meeting a couple of, what, three, three weeks ago. It won't be like that. Um, I think it'd be a, it'd be a tighter game this time for sure. Mm. And like the the manner of that defeat too, and the fact that you know uh, Damien Damien Comer has gone off injured since he's par- apparently out of the game. Shane Walsh is only working his way back in. Like that defeat, do you think that that's going to give confidence to Mayo or actually kind of burn Galway to the point where they'll look to lay down a marker? Yeah, a bit of both. Like it, it would have been Galway's. Um would you say second string team like it just said to me uh, like uh, at the time i i i was kind of mystified as in like if i'm a goalie guy you know in the 26 i'm trying to break onto that 15 like uh, it just it proves to me that the the kind of the, the male strength and depth in terms of their squad now their james has built nicely that there's much more strict and depth in the Mayo side than there is Galway side going, going from that game but I, I do realise it is a strange year um, you know this year let's be honest it's been kind of all over the shop and training and lads you know James closed down again you know it, 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 like Mayo I know Mayo had kept in touch during the summer months um, doing the Zoom meetings and, and stuff like that and he, like I'm not too sure like it looked to me that Mayo were, were way ahead of Galway at that stage three so do you uh, how impressed have you been with the younger players like Oshin Mullen O McLaughlin yeah. Rhino Donahue <sighs> even Mark Moore who came in uh, in that Galway game and yeah. spoke too it's been that's been a, fr- a fresh breath a fresh breath air is that the right breath of fresh uh, air breath, of, breath of fresh air <laughs> yeah. breath of fresh air but uh, yeah no it's uh, like look it's it's like father time waits for no man as you know so uh, the guys who are in their 30s now the likes of Cullum, Zippy, uh, Tom Harrison, Shane O'Shea like, uh, like them, them guys uh, you know I, I'd expect probably Zippy and, and Cullum to get maybe 10 minutes 15 minutes the next day and, uh, you know if, if the game's close and they're trying to close it out like that that wealth of experience is invaluable but the young players have come in they've been they've been shown brilliantly the athleticism of Owen McLaughlin, Oshin Mullen um, you know <laughs> Again, they all have the springboard again from the back line. You, you have Oshin, you have Leroy, you have Paddy Jerkin, you have Owen McLaughlin. Like Chrissy and Stevie Cohen will be more more defenders as in they sit, uh, sit back a bit more, mind the house. But it's like they have a rotation before them who goes at each time. And I know as a forward, like, it'd be an absolute pain in the hole trying to, you know, they're dictating things, like, do you know what I mean? So them four guys running after them, like, like if they go three or four times in a half, you're running after them and they're dictating to you instead of the other way around. Like so, if and that's what I'm thinking too. With, with, on, on Sunday, like if Galway get a foothold in midfield, that's why midfield is so important on Sunday. If they get a foothold in that midfield, well, my old half back line won't have that springboard to, to launch forward. So that's why the middle third now is so important on Sunday. Let's let's imagine that Shane Walsh does play in this match because we saw him coming on against Dublin and there's been no Galway match in the meantime because the Sligo game obviously was awarded yeah. to Galway. If you if you look at the matchups that James Horan picked the other day, like uh, Lee Keegan going on Cahill Craig, decisively yeah. won that battle. Paddy Durkin yeah. had Enda Smith going the other way. Both of those lads yeah. were taken off. Durkin scores two points. Who goes on Shane Walsh? I'll be Leroy, 100%. Yeah. Leroy, Leroy will take him up, I'd say. Um, ah, he will, absolutely. Like, uh, Shane Walsh is, is, um, is always number one. Like, uh, Jamie Coleman is obviously a huge loss to them. Um, so, yeah, James is usually, they'll discuss their matchups now this week, who they want to put on. But Leroy, Leroy is still their number one marker. Like, if, if you want someone um, out of the game, like, Leroy's your man. And is, is there any. Like, what are you worried about when you're looking at this Galway team at the moment? Paul Conroy has been shown well recently. Shane Walsh may light it up. Liam Silk's a really good player. 
What are you worried about? Uh, I'm worried about the middle third, to be honest. I'm worried that our physicality, you're, we haven't... Um, I don't want to be too critical because it's, it's obviously it's a strange year. Like when we say Madurell and Conor off, just there will be question marks there in terms of their physicality. Now I know Edo, Edo will be coming in and out. I don't think people have noticed this, but Conor seems to be. I I would I I think that they're kind of switching in and out from full forward to midfield. Edo's coming out a bit, and uh, if they're under pressure, and I think that that'll have to be that'll have to be the case on 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 Sunday. I I think go like. Middle third for me would be a big worry because if we don't get a foothold in that middle third, obviously our half back and the springboard, uh, they won't have any springboard. So, you know, they'll be on the back foot. Um, so that's my main concern. Um, you see, all over Scotland the last day, they launched, and very unusual now, but conditions will dictate this that, you know, there'd be more long ball going out the middle third because conditions are so bad. Uh, do do uh, goalies and defences want to take that risk of? Giving that twenty yard out ball from the kick out and summing up your hole. So there's gonna be more fifty it's gonna be a bit more it's gonna be a bit more old school to be honest with the, the last couple of months. Yeah. Um going into the All Ireland series. And like Mayo probably end up posting Aidan O'Shea almost full time out to midfield if nearly every kick out was going out there and Galway were winning them. Well yeah, you, you saw Roscommon, I probably counted the first four or five kickouts that the keeper had, he, he went along with it. Yeah. So that that tells me obviously meetings beforehand when they're looking at Mayo as they feel that they don't respect them. So that's up to Mayo and feel now on Sunday to lay down a marker, Connor Loftus is new in there, Matthew Ryan obviously had a breakout season last year, but it's up to them to lay down the marker and, you know, set the things straight basically and say, Yeah, we're we're here to we're here to mix things up. And Andy Moran said after the last game that uh, about Killian O'Connor, he changed us from a decent team to a really good team with just one player. To me, I rate him up there at the highest. I think he's one of the best players going. Like, uh, and he talked about his form in the last maybe 18 months. was an unbelievable. But do you, do you see him hitting top form and, and is he in that top bracket? Uh, yeah, and I'm not just saying that. Like, Killian, Killian wouldn't exactly be, uh, be loved by the dubs here, but... Like if it's he sure it brings is. A, <laughs> it brings a certain physicality to things we put like that. But uh, I think he's, he's addressed that. But like people take for granted now that like he, he scored nine points the last day. And yes, uh, I'm not too sure about free to work. But you still have to like the free taker. He makes me all into an uh, I'm not going to say an average team into an average team to a better team. To purely from his free taking, as in, like, you're guaranteed 90% of his free is going to go over. And he just keeps the team taking over with that. But in saying that, too, I don't want to disrespect him in saying, like, oh, he brings nothing from play. Like, the last day he scored three or four points from play, uh, showed very well for the ball, very intelligent, creates space for other people, except NATO, are working well in tangent inside with each other. They're two very intelligent players and they work well off each other. You know, they, they, they're nearly like, you know, like a string like they're pretty much 30 yards away from each other all the time in that foot forward like uh, they, don't, they don't want to you know create that distance like Tommy Conroy another good find for Mayo he seems to be kind of coming out to the 45 working hard creating that link with Kevin McLaughlin who another guy that's coming into form as well at the right time Did you think it was unusual to see Kevin McLaughlin wearing number 6 in the previous game? I did yeah and I wasn't I just think and again I don't want to be too critical but you're you're throwing Kevin in there like a six to me. It's such an integral position. Kevin offers so much. Now, Kevin's a very intelligent player. If you ask him, like, Kevin can play six. He plays six, no problem. But I think Stephen Cole is the more sensible option. He's a more defensive minded player. Um, you know, he's what is he now? He's about twenty five now at this stage. He's he's coming into his peak years, and he's a very intelligent player in terms of he's more a six to me. It has to be more defensive minded. Mind your full back line. Um, if your man is drifting off, well, then you're you're cheating back to create that plus one at the back to help out your full back line because you know obviously a lot of teams want to go along to the foot forward line. And you know, in in the college championship the last few years, 16, 17, 18, I think Galway beat Mayo. Then last year, yeah. Ross Common beat Mayo. And do you think the the fact that Mayo have played the way they have in the last couple of games, maybe the Leitrim one, they're always going to win, is something to do with? will beat Ross Common when it actually really matters. Like, remember a couple of years ago at Croke Park, mm. hammering them out the gate. That it's yeah, one thing beating yeah, us yeah. in Mayo when there's a trap door and maybe we're not fully switched on. But when it's championship and knockout, Mayo are going to step up. 
I think, to be honest, uh, the last few years, the, the, the team was, it was just purely looking for the All Ireland series. As in, I don't want to, not disrespecting Connacht, but then teams caught Mayo on the hop. If, the, if it wasn't a backdoor system, I think Mayo would have been switched, switched on more. It's just the fact that as you get older, you're kind of, I'm not going to say your motivation changes, but you know, you're, you're trying to peak at the right time. Uh, but with this, younger squad and it is a younger squad now James has transitioned it quite well that these young players are hungry and they want they want a kind of title and they're building nicely um, they're building nicely into the kind of final and it's it's nice you, you could even see the progression from the team from February March when the whole thing got shut down to now even the likes of obviously the younger players Mark Moore Owen McLaughlin uh, Oshie Mullen um, these guys have, have kind of physically uh, stepped stepped up to the mark and they, they, they look good finds. Mm. Do, do you have any idea what happened with Galway's who can, can be so good earlier on in the league and then you know there's obviously Covid and there's eight months without playing mm. but they looked terrible against Mayo and then mm. they were a bit better against Dublin but they were always at arm's length. Always at arm's length yeah again change like individually you, you gotta ask questions from the players what they're doing during the six months they're off um you know um, accountability honesty like from from their male game that's, that's why i can't imagine it like it's a, it's a local derby you haven't played football they probably had a challenge match before that game they haven't played football for months and you think to be itching to go but yet like it was very lackluster. It was no energy about them, no fight. Um, didn't didn't seem like there was a game plan. Um, to me, Russian Russian Damien Comer, you know, it, it was a um, talk of a missing game with a hamstring uh, strain or a tweak in the hamstring, but yet they, they throw him in. Um, is that panic? Just strange. Is that, is yeah, that small, team? yeah. Small. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it felt when I was watching the game, I was just shaking my head. I was like, I couldn't. I couldn't believe it's how how poor they were. Um, so yeah, look, they're obviously this Sunday. There is going to be a bite in them. It just depends. Can Mayo keep them at arm's length? Um, I, I expect Mayo to win by probably four or five points. I think they're a better team, uh, one to fifteen. Uh, I really do. I think I think they're we're peaking at the right time. And even it shows the the mentality in terms of. You know, they all got relegated from Division One, which is a huge thing. But it's all right. Brush that off. Next game, um, they lost to Tyrone by points. It wasn't a true reflection of, I think, where that team is at. Um, so look, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm taking a bit of a leap here, but bear with me. May or I like even the book is actually called it close enough, like ten to eleven, eleven to ten. Yeah. But like, it feels like May or definitely favourites to win this game. Then you have to beat a Division Three team, and you're into an All Ireland final. For you normally have the hard road. For once, it's opening up for you. Yeah, um, <laughs> dangerous. That's dangerous talk now. Um, yeah. Look, all Mayo, and all you can do is you know yourself, Shane, as a player. You you should be thinking like, if we play, if Mayo play at their best, right, and go and play at their best, I expect Mayo to win. But obviously, if if you're off. If your attitude's off, if execution's off, decision making, all that, that's off on the day. But then you're going to lose. But all being 100% uh, Galway Mayo side by side, I, I'd be expecting Mayo to, to get through it. And then you're going on to the All Ireland series. Look, Kerry, Kerry obviously felt that as well. You can't, it's, it's so, so dangerous because with the conditions now in the winter months, like you, you saw, you saw Dublin beat Westmead by 11 points. And it was a fair, that's a fair clip in like, but in Crow Park, that could have been 20, 22 points, drier conditions, you know, the, the really good teams literally put you away in the first half, especially Dublin. So, um, and Cork have improved. I'm not, we're talking, we're talking about Cork now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, keep writing them off, keep writing them off. We're also talking about Tipperary, you know, come through, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% yeah, yeah. Um, yeah look Tipperary could be, well, come around now and be Cork in the, in the most fine you don't know so yeah I mean, it's, it could be Tip it could be Tip and Cork in the, in the Ireland or Tip and Tip and Cork in the Ireland semi-final <laughs> yeah yeah actually have, did you see much from Dublin to suggest they've slowed down any way shape or form they're against the Leash team that beat Longford by two points yeah look um, obviously they'll, they'll probably they'll probably beat Leash let's be honest um, 
Yeah, I, I'd probably say their squad isn't as, as, as strong as it was. You're, you're talking Dublin's peak, peak was probably back in the, would you say back 16, 17 was Dublin's peak? Um, there were two peak years. I'm not just saying that now because obviously they bet me all, but like that, you know, their age profile is quite good. And, you know, you had the likes of the retirements come off now, obviously Burns, two years gone, Jamin's gone this year. That experience off the bench, you know, their, their subs, Paddy Andrews, Kevin Mack, they're all getting older. You know, th- their age profile, it's pushing on a bit. Uh, and they're trying to introduce, they're trying to transition their team slowly as well. So it's, Desi has a tough job because transitioning the team while you're still winning is always going to be harder because obviously we're taking a two, three time all star out of the team for a new guy coming in when there's going to be some criticism. So, that's the balance he has to get right now. It's going to be it's going to be a tough job. Were you surprised to see Dermot Connolly step away, your club mate? Um, was I surprised? Probably. I, I don't know. I don't know. Like uh, uh, only he can tell you what the conversation he had with Jesse was like. Um, possibly he was going to be, you know, um, you know his his. His starting position would have been up for grabs. Maybe you know last year he came on the All Ireland final at half time. Did he want to be a, an impact bench player? I'm not too sure. So only only the two then can tell you what that conversation what conversation they had. Uh, but look, Jim is Jim is probably 33 now. You know he's he's done done pretty much everything you can do in the game. So uh, it wasn't too much uh, surprise either. I suppose. Mm. The final question, the most awkward of all: Who's going to win the All Ireland? <laughs> Oh Jesus! <laughs> I can't. I can't. Uh, I like. I thought Kerry. I thought Kerry at the start of the year, and they absolutely botched botched me uh, last Saturday. Was it Sunday or Saturday? Sunday? Sunday, Sunday. Um, Sunday. Yeah. So, look, it, you, you have to, you have to still give Dublin the edge. I, I, I still, I think that chasing back is catching them. Um, I think Mayo are coming, uh, but I think it's probably a year too soon for them. Um, I think they'd be serious contenders. Now, no, in saying that, in saying that too, as you said, there's a nice clear path for them. They, they could easily get to an All-Ireland final. And then, you know, Mayo, you presume, like, Dublin have to play Johnny Gall in the semi-final on that side. So, um, you know, one-off game, Dublin Mayo, the rivalry is fierce. Like, <laughs> it's, it's not it's not from the realms of possibility. And it'd be, how ironic it would be during a, a pandemic where Mayo would win the All Ireland and no one could celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, it'd be mad. But you've actually written off six teams there. You've written off the three other Leinster teams, the three other Ulster teams. You really have jumped on. And you wonder then when I write off the teams on your side of the draw, you don't want it over. <laughs> but fair enough. I went a bit farther, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, brilliant stuff, and I appreciate it. Cheers, Ross, man.